<clears throat> Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide. 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today is our lesson number 16. We are on page number 88. Yesterday we did the first four problems that you see on page 88 and the, on the left hand column and today we'll do the four that are remaining on the right hand column. The very first problem, problem 94, as you can see it's already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to read it to you. Then I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to pause the video and do it yourself. It's a very straightforward, simple problem. It says that z plus 1 minus 2z squared over z is equal to w over z. We are told that z does not equal 0. Obviously, it does not equal 0. Otherwise, we will have a problem here. Question simply is how much is w? They want us to solve this equation for w. That's what it is. Go ahead, pause the video and do it yourself. As I said, it's a very straightforward, very childish problem. Multiply top and bottom here by z. So now we have a common denominator everywhere. Z, z appears at the bottom everywhere. We can ignore it. So we get z squared plus 1 minus 2z squared equals w, which is exactly what we want. They want to solve for w. We have to simplify it. Positive z squared or negative 2z squared is going to give us negative z squared and a positive 1. That's all. That's our answer. Nothing to it. Very straightforward. Number 95. In number 95, we are given a set of three numbers. We are given a set of three numbers, A, B, C, A, B, C, and we are supposed to perform some operation on it. What operation it is, we really don't care at this point. On three other numbers, D, E, and F. And we are told that when, we, when the operation is performed, this is the result. A times D plus B times E plus C times F. The question simply is this. How much is 1, negative 2, 3, same operation, 1, negative half, and 1 third? Go ahead, do it yourself. This is another one of, one, another one of those silly problems. There's not much going on here. Do it yourself. I'll give you a second to, post, to be able to pause the video. Well, let's see what we can do, shall we? As you can see, if we study closely a little bit, we'll see that what we're getting here is actually the result of these products, A times D, right here, A times D, then we have a B times E, and then we have C times F. That's all it is, that's all we have to do. So let's do it. Here we have 1, 1 times 1, 1 times 1, so that takes care of this part. Now we have to do negative 2 times a negative half, so positive, negative 2 times negative half, plus, and now we have to do 3 times 1 third. 3 times 1 third, as you can see, there's not much going on here. 2's are going to drop out, 1 times 1 is just 1, 2's are going to drop out, we have a negative here, a negative here, that's going to give us positive 1, and here 3's are going to drop out, and we're going to get another one, the answer is 3. This is the next one, shall we? Number 96. Number, five. number 96 is not that straightforward. It does, not, it does require some thinking. Here's a question, number 96. We are told that we have two numbers, M and P. We are told that they are both positive, And we are told that they are both integers. The conditions that we have to fulfill is that the sum of their squared, M squared plus P squared, must be less than 100. That's the condition we have to fulfill. Question is this. Question is, what is the greatest possible value? What is the greatest possible value of their product? Of their product, M and P. That's all. And here are the answer choices. 36, 
42, 48, 49, and 51. As you know, most of the times I do not give the answer choices, but in a question like this, of course, it helps to have the answer choices because you know you have to pick one out of those five. I'll give you a second to be able to pause the video, do it yourself, and then we'll do it together, okay? One more time, m squared plus p squared, sum of their squares, of course, square quantity has to be less than 100, they're both, they're both positive, both, they're both integers, what is the greatest possible value? Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's begin, shall we? The very first thing we need to understand the very first thing you need to understand is that because the sum of their square is less than 100, neither of these quantities can be double digit. For example, even if you take the smallest value for m, 1 squared, and even if you were to take the smallest value for p, which is 10 squared, it is no longer less than 100. That tells us that they all need, they both need to be single quantity, uh, single digits, not all, both, there is only two. They both need to be single digits. Let's begin now. Let's start with 36, see what we can do. When you have 36, there aren't too many choices. It's either it's either 6 times 6 or 4 times 9. Because you can't go with 2 times 18. As, uh, as we already discussed, 18 squared is already more than 100. They have to be single digits. If it's 6 times 6, that gives us 36. We just have to verify that it meets this condition. 6 squared plus 6 squared, of course, is less than, less than 100 because they are both less than 50. 4 squared plus 9 squared is going to give us 16 plus 81. I just want to do it all very quickly. That's a 7, 97. That also works. Which means that's a possibility. That's a contender. That's a possibility. That works. Until we find something bigger than that, that's the potential answer. That's a as I said, that's a contender. Let's look at 42. 42 again, because they have to be single digits, they cannot be 2 times 21. Uh, I'm going to try 6 times. 6 times. 6 7 is 42. There you go. 6 7 is a 42. 6 squared is 36. And that's a 49. Since they are both less than 50, of course this is less than 100. And that works. But that means that the product of M and P could be 6 times 7, 42. This is a contender. Since it can be 42, it can no longer be 36 because we're looking for the greatest one. I erased it. We're looking for the greatest one. Let's move on to 48. Is there anything else? It could be 6 times, it could be 3 times 14. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. That's, that's about it. Let's do 48. 48, we can have 6 eighths of 48. Let's try that first. 6 squared plus 8 squared is 64, is 36. And 64. 36 plus 64 is 100, which last time I checked, which last time I checked was, la was not less than 100. 100 cannot be less than 100. It does not work. 48 does not work. It's there, but it doesn't work. Is there any other way we can break 48? We can do 2 and 24. Obviously, that's two-digit number. Uh, we can do... How about if we try divided by 3? 48 divided by 3, that's the 1. No, that's not going to work. That's 16. That's it. It doesn't work. Let's move on to 49. 49 is a very straightforward, simple one. I feel that I missed something here in 48. Is there any other combination for 48 we could try? No, that's about it. That's about it. Let's do 49. 49 is a very straightforward deal. It's a very straightforward deal because it's a product of two prime numbers. It's 7 times 7. And of course 7 squared plus 7 squared is less than 100 because they are both less than 50. So that works. Which means 49 works. 49 works. Since 49 works, we know now 42 is not the answer. This is a contender. Let's try 51. 51, I, I hope, if you're, if you're about to take GMAT, these are simple things that you have to be able to see right away. I hope that you're able to see immediately that 51 does not work. 51 is simply a product of two prime numbers. 17 times 3. If you divide 51 by 3, 5 has a 1, 3, the remaining two goes and joins the one becomes 21 and 21 is made up of 7. It's a 17 times 3. It's not going to work obviously because 17 square itself is much more than 100. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The answer is, the answer is D. Let's do 97. 
97 is also something that's going to require some thinking. 97 is not as simple as the first two that we did on this page, 94 and 95. Those were gifts. 96 was not a gift, it required some work. 97, same thing, is going to require some work. In 97 we are told that x over y is equal to c over d and we are told that d over c is equal to b over a. If I mix up the uppercase and lowercase, don't worry about it. I'm mixing it up because I'm sloppy. This question is which must be true? Which? It says which of the following must be true? Which must be true? And there are three answer choices here. Three, three. y over x is equal to b over a or x over a is equal to y over b or y over a y over a is equal to x over b one more time I want to make sure I Number one was x over y over x is b over a, x over a is y over b, y over a is equal to x over b, and those are the two uh, given statements for, for us. y over x over y is equal to c over d, and d over c is equal to b over a. Go ahead, do it yourself. And the answer choices, before you start doing it, the answer choices, the way, the way they are laid out, they're combinations. It could be one only, one and two, or three, two and three, whatever. Uh, they could it's not answer is not just one statement it could be one or more statement the combinations do it yourself i'll give you a second to be able to pause the video look in a question like this there are two ways to go about it one way is a very straightforward way which is to make your life miserable that's always one way in the exam the other way is to keep it simple keep it simple in the problem like this, if you were to work with all these symbols, all these letters, it's very easy to get confused. And once you get bogged down, the, the clock keeps ticking and you end up wasting a lot of time. Don't do that. Just plug in numbers. Numbers do not lie. Numbers, if it doesn't work with numbers, it's not going to work with the letters because these letters that you see there, they are numbers. They are quantities. They represent some quantities. Let's plug in some numbers here. Okay? Let's see, let's see what we can do. I'm going to pretend that x is equal to 10, y is equal to 5. That makes a 2. Now, you, of course, you have to plug in unique numbers, obviously. So that's 10 over 5, that's a 2. How about 8 over 4? That would work, which means d is 4 and c is 8. So that makes it half. Let's plug, plug in 3 and 6. 3 and 6, and that's what it is. Once you have your numbers, go through all the three statements. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You're done. That's it. Don't have to do any algebra. Let's try it. y over x. So if x over y is 10 over 5, this is 5 over 10. Five, I'm, I'm just going to put it here. 5 over 10. And b over a. How much is b? b is, oh, there you go. 3 over 6. It works. 3 over 6. 3 over 6 is half. 5 over 10 is half. That works. Let's do the next one. x is, x is 10. And where is a? We need a. a is... Right there, A is 6. My writing was sloppy, but A is 6 right there. A is 6. Let's see what we get here. Y is 5. Y is 5 and B is 3. Does that work? The answer is, answer is it does work. Because if you cross multiply, 10 times 3 is 30 and 6 fives are 30. It definitely does work. Second statement is also true. 10 times 3 is 30, 6 times 5 is 30. Let's look at third one. Y over A. Y is 5. A is 6. X is 10. And I can stop right there. I can stop right here because, look, here's what's going on. 5 over 6, right? Instead of a 5, we have a 10. In order for this thing to work, since the denominator, since the numerator is doubled, the denominator will have to be double. 
if this is 5 and this is 10, this, uh, this is 6, this has to be 12. And I don't recall plugging in any 12. We started with 10 and after that they were all single digits. There is no 12 anywhere. B is 3. We need a 12. In order for it to be true, we need a 12 here. Statement number 3 does not work. The answer is 1 and 2 only. That was the end of the page. There were only four simple problems in the second column. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from where we left off on day number 17 from problem number 98. Alright? Bye now.